signature. So that is your signature, huh? Oh, no doubt about it. Whose is it? Yours? That's mine. You're a lucky guy. He's definitely one of the ones that is. Come back to roost. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> If you're a die-hard fan of Pawn Stars, then you're no stranger to the jaw-dropping surprises that unfold at the gold and silver pawn shop in Las Vegas. This iconic shop is like a magnet for all sorts of characters looking to pawn or sell their one-of-a-kind treasures, whether it's ancient coins or vintage guitars. But sometimes the people who walk in are not just regular folks, but celebrities. In this video, we will reveal the moments when famous actors walked in for a trade on Pawn Stars. Get ready to be surprised because you won't believe who showed up and what they brought with them. Steve Carell Have you ever fantasized about casually bumping into a celebrity and having a normal conversation without the chaos of paparazzi or the risk of getting an unexpected reaction from the star? Well, the staff at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop had a taste of that fantasy when a certain familiar face walked through their doors one fine day. It all started with Corey, who spotted the celebrity and immediately went into stealth mode. He discreetly checked with his co-worker, Chum, to confirm his suspicions. Chum, he whispered, nodding towards the customer. Is that Steve Carell? Soon, Corey, Chum Lee, and Rick found themselves huddled behind the counter, engaging in a lively debate or perhaps a friendly argument about the identity of the mysterious visitor. Go ask him, Corey urged, as they all peered at the not-too-tall, bespectacled gentleman browsing through the shop, completely unnoticed by other customers. After much deliberation, they decided to send Rick on a mission. I'll go ask him. Rick volunteered with a nonchalant shrug, as if to say, what's the big deal? Meanwhile, Rick's father, Richard Benjamin Harrison Jr., seemed utterly perplexed by the commotion. Who in the hell is Steve Carell? He grumbled, clearly in need of a quick refresher on pop culture. For those who might be experiencing the same brief time of not realizing Richard's celebrity, here's a brief rundown. Steve Carell is best known for his iconic role as Michael Scott, the bumbling boss from the hit TV series, The Office. He's also graced the big screen in films like The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Little Miss Sunshine, Crazy, Stupid, Love, and Battle of the Sexes, not to mention his recent ventures into streaming platforms, where he's taken on roles in Netflix's Space Force and Apple TV Plus' The Morning Show, as well as lending his voice to the beloved Despicable Me franchise. In essence, he's a ubiquitous presence in the entertainment world, guaranteed to be recognized by fans wherever he goes. The burning question at the pawn shop was whether Carell had casually strolled in just to browse. And there was only one way for the Harrisons to find out. As Rick ventured forth to engage with the enigmatic visitor, the anticipation among the staff was palpable. Would they finally have their celebrity encounter moment, or would it turn out to be a case of mistaken identity, leaving them red-faced and slightly disappointed? Are you Steve Carell? Rick asked, cutting right to the chase. Are you Steve Carell? No, I get that a lot. The man, who bore a striking resemblance to the famous actor, chuckled and replied, No, I get that a lot, but I'm not Steve Carell. No, I get that a lot. I'm uh, not. Okay, yeah, I thought he was a lot shorter. Now, most people would have left it at that, but not Rick. He couldn't resist a good opportunity to put his foot in his mouth. Well, obviously you're not Steve Carell, he quipped. I mean, everyone knows he's much shorter than you. Yeah, I thought he was a lot shorter. The man's smile faded, and he shot back. What do you mean, a lot shorter? Everybody thinks I'm five and eight. What do you mean, a lot shorter? I mean, everybody thought... thinks I'm five eight. Realizing his blunder, Rick tried to salvage the situation. So you are Steve Carell? He attempted again. So you are Steve Carell? No. <laughs> It was clear by this point that the whole thing was a setup. 
and both Rick and the mystery man couldn't contain their laughter. As it turned out, the man was indeed Steve Carell. And he wasn't just there to mess around. He was on a mission to make a purchase. Carell's eyes lit up as he laid eyes on a World War II dive knife. His interest was piqued, and he wasted no time in getting down to business. When informed that the going price for the item was $20,500, Carell didn't hesitate to make a counteroffer. You know what? That seems a little low, he remarked. I will give you $4,000. Rick, always up for a good-natured banter, bumped up the price to $5,000. Not one to back down, Carell raised the stakes even further with an offer of $5,500. It was all in good fun, but Rick wasn't about to take advantage of a customer. Bringing it back down to $3,200, he extended his hand to seal the deal on fair terms. The two of them couldn't help but crack up at the absurdity of the situation. In the end, it was unclear whether Carell had actually purchased the knife or not. But one thing was for sure. He promised he'd be back, perhaps next time as a seller. And with that, the comedic encounter came to an end, leaving everyone in the shop with a good laugh and a memorable story to tell. Dana White Dana White, the president of UFC, found himself in an unexpected shopping spree at Rick's store when he stumbled upon a rare and valuable samurai sword. The chain of events that followed was nothing short of entertaining and lucrative for everyone involved. It all started when Japanese sword expert Mike Yamasaki unveiled Rick's personal samurai sword, dating back to the early 1600s. The meticulously restored sword, complete with a new case, authentic Japanese wood, and a traditional handle wrap, caught the eye of Dana White, who had a keen interest in combat sports and rare weapons. Rick the owner of the sword, made it clear that his prized possession was not for sale. Instead, he intended to display it in a case for admiration. Little did he know that his decision would spark a series of negotiations and unexpected sales. As the sword expert, Yamasaki, appraised the sword at a whopping $35,000 to $40,000, Rick revealed that he had waited over two years for the restoration. Just when he thought the drama was over, Dana White walks in, on the hunt to expand his weapon room collection. Chum Lee, always quick to seize an opportunity, boasted about the sword's historical significance and its connection to an original samurai family. This piqued Dana White's interest even further. The UFC president was not one to back down from a good deal, and he wasted no time in making an offer. Chumley, with his characteristic flair, negotiated with Dana White, who was impressed by the sword's pristine condition. After some banter and a bit of showmanship, a deal was struck at $30,000, with the promise of purchasing additional swords from Rick's collection. Not one to miss out on a chance to make a profit, Rick stepped in with another sword that had belonged to a lord in the Japanese Civil War. Dana White, having already committed to buying all the other swords in the store, saw an opportunity for a discount. After some back and forth, a price of $9,000 was settled upon, much to everyone's satisfaction. In the end, Dana White walked away with not just one, but multiple valuable swords, adding to his impressive collection. Rick may have initially intended to keep his prized possession for display, but he couldn't resist the allure of a profitable deal. Who knew that a chance encounter would lead to such a remarkable exchange? It's safe to say that Dana White's visit to the store was anything but ordinary. Stan Lee, the legendary Marvel creator, is no stranger to making cameo appearances, but when he popped up on an episode of Pawn Stars, it was a real treat for fans of the show. The episode, titled Spider Pawn, brought together the worlds of comic book history and pawn shop antics in a way that only pawn stars could. The premise of the episode revolved around a rare 1977 Spider-Man comic strip that made its way into the shop. 
The strip featured a racy depiction of the character Mary Jane in a bathtub, adding an extra layer of intrigue to its already valuable status. The owner, Vince, claimed to have purchased the strip directly from the illustrator, John Romita, and pointed out what appeared to be Stan Lee's signature on the panel. Then Chum Lee, the lovable goofball of the Pawn Stars crew, immediately saw the potential in this piece of comic book history. However, being the savvy businessman that he is, Chumley wasn't about to drop $10,000 on the strip without first getting confirmation of the signature's authenticity. So, off he went on a quest to track down the one and only Stan Lee himself. With Vince in tow, Chum Lay made his way to the Avengers station on the Las Vegas Strip, where they were greeted by the man behind so many iconic Marvel characters. After a bit of banter and some good-natured ribbing, Lee confirmed that the signature was indeed his own, adding a stamp of approval to the Strip's value. But even with Lee's confirmation, Chum Lee wasn't quite ready to meet Vince's asking price. After a bit of back-and-forth negotiation, Chum Lee managed to snag the authentic comic strip for a cool $5,000. In the world of Pawn Stars, you truly never know what's going to walk through that door. But one thing's for sure, when Stan Lee himself makes an appearance, you can bet it's going to be an episode worth watching. Phil Collins' Guitar when it comes to celebrity-owned guitars, world-famous gold and silver pawn shop in Las Vegas has seen it all. From rock gods to Hollywood icons, their doors have welcomed some truly iconic instruments. And every now and then, the stars themselves, or their entourage, make a surprise appearance. You might recognize the pawn shop from its starring role on the History Channel's hit show, Pawn Stars. But even with all the glitz and glamour, Nothing could prepare them for the arrival of a one-of-a-kind Jackson Phil Collins signature guitar. A savvy seller walks through the door with an artist-proof copy of Collins' legendary axe, hoping to fetch $10,000. Not exactly chump change. The Pawn Stars Brain Trust knows they need an expert opinion, so they call in none other than the man himself, Phil Collins, the guitar virtuoso behind Def Leppard and Man Ray's. As soon as Colin lays eyes on the guitar, he's flooded with memories. He reveals that he personally painted 30 of these beauties, and this particular one was among the first 10. The camera zooms in on the guitar's handle, where AAP3 is etched, a telltale sign of its early origins in Colin's painting project. And just to prove that this work of art is more than just a pretty face, Colin plugs in and starts shredding right there in the middle of the shop. The verdict? This guitar not only looks stunning, but plays like a dream. With the stage set, it's time for the negotiation dance. The seller is gunning for $10,000, but Rick, the shrewd dealmaker that he is, comes in with an offer of $8,000. When the seller's disappointment is palpable, Rick lays down some hard truths. He's got to make a buck, too. After some back-and-forth banter, they settle on a sweet deal at $8,500. And just like that, another chapter is added to the storied history of world-famous gold and silver pawn shop. Who knew that a chance encounter with a rock legend's guitar could make for such a memorable day at the office? Mick Foley Mick Foley, a man of many personas and even more surprises, made an unexpected appearance on the hit show Pawn Stars, leaving both the cast and viewers in awe. In season 18, episode 14, titled That's the Way the Cookie Crumbles, the Pawn Stars crew found themselves in a bit of a pickle when a man brought in some signed wrestling memorabilia. Now, we all know that when something enters the Pawn Stars shop, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. This sentiment is echoed by none other than the shop's owner, Rick Harrison, who famously quips, You never know what is going to come through that door. And this time, he was right. The man in question had brought in a vintage WWE Dude Love t-shirt and a Mankind mask, both signed by the one and only Mick Foley. The only hitch? 
Rick and the gang were about as knowledgeable about wrestling as a fish is about riding a bicycle. With their signature expert out of town, they were at a loss until Chumley stepped in to save the day. Chumley, the unlikely hero in this tale, took it upon himself to call in a favor from an even more unlikely source, none other than Mick Foley himself. In a twist that absolutely no one saw coming, Chum Lee managed to wrangle the pro wrestler to verify the signatures on the items. In walks Mick Foley, a man who needs no introduction in the world of professional wrestling. Known for his various alter egos, Cactus Jack, Mankind, and Dude Love, Foley's presence in the pawn shop was nothing short of a shock to the system. The owner of the memorabilia could hardly believe his luck as Foley proceeded to drop some knowledge bombs about the items. Foley verified the signatures on both the t-shirt and the mask, much to everyone's relief. Not only that, he also shed light on the rarity and authenticity of the items. According to Foley, the Dude Love t-shirt was one of the first of its kind to be made, making it a true gem for any wrestling enthusiast. The tie-dye was very expensive to make, and they couldn't promise that every run would look exactly like the original, and that's why this one has far more green in it. However, when it came down to the nitty-gritty of determining the value of these prized possessions, even Foley was at a loss. It seemed that the man of many faces and talents was stumped by the worth of his own memorabilia, but our intrepid pawn shop owner, Rick, was ready to make an offer. After some back-and-forth banter and a few signature catchphrases from Foley himself, Rick offered the owner $200 for both items. However, it quickly became apparent that this passionate wrestling fan was not about to part ways with his cherished pieces for a measly sum. In the end, the owner walked away from the deal with his head held high, content in the knowledge that he had not only met Mick Foley in the flesh, but also gained insight into the true value of his prized possessions. Well, have a nice day. <laughs> no, have a nice day. That's what I said. I said, have a nice day. As for Rick and the gang, well, they were left to ponder the unpredictable nature of their business and the colorful characters it brings through their doors. Katie Couric. Katie Couric, the renowned journalist and talk show host, made a memorable stop at a pawn shop back in 2013, and let's just say it was quite an eventful visit. Known for her time on NBC's Today Show and the CBS Evening News, as well as her own talk show, Katie, Couric's presence at the pawn shop certainly caused a stir, especially when she took a keen interest in a unique item that caught her eye. It all started when Couric dropped by the shop during an episode of her talk show. Now, you'd think that someone as well-known as Katie Couric would be instantly recognized, right? Well, not quite. Rick's son, Corey Big Hoss Harrison, had a bit of trouble placing her at first. He managed to get the Katie part right, but then things took an amusing turn. First, he referred to Couric as Katie Holmes, and then Katy Perry. Katie Holmes? Oh, no, 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 no. Katie Perry? But Rick stepped in to clear up the case of mistaken identity and help out the familiar face. Katie Kirk, how's it going? Fine, thank you. You're now, among all the intriguing items at the pawn shop, guess what Katie Couric picked? She zeroed in on a frame that held a mountain photo, an engraved plate, and a card with a saying and a signature of none other than the legendary American writer and humorist Mark Twain. Quite the find, wouldn't you say? As Rick Harrison explained the significance of the Twain item to Couric, she couldn't help but be intrigued. The card had a saying from Twain himself, We ought never do wrong when anyone is looking. Wise words indeed. Couric, with her fondness for Twain's work, even read the saying out loud with a chuckle, reminiscing about her college days when she devoured Twain's writings. We ought never do wrong when anyone is looking. <laughs> it was clear that she held Twain in high regard and appreciated his wry sense of humor. But would Couric be willing to pay a hefty sum for this rare piece of memorabilia? After expressing interest in purchasing the Mark Twain piece, Rick Harrison revealed the eye-popping price tag, $20,000.
Now that's no small change. Corrick seemed a tad taken aback by the offer, and understandably so. However, Harrison explained that he had originally purchased the Twain item for $8,500, so the markup was quite substantial. I bought this a while ago for $8,500, and since then, I have not gotten any solid offers. So but it's all part of the pawn shop business, right? Gotta make some profit. Kurik wasn't about to back down without a little negotiation. She countered with an offer of $12,000. And after a bit of back and forth, Harrison finally sealed the deal with a deal. Kurik was taken aback once again, this time by Harrison accepting her offer. Really? Sold? She exclaimed. It seemed that Harrison couldn't resist the allure of having Katie Corrick as a customer. Harrison attributed his willingness to lower the price to Corrick's celebrity status, stating, It's not every day we get Katie Corrick in here. He couldn't help but add with a laugh, I rarely take this much off an item because I have to keep the doors open, but Katie Couric has a talk show with millions of viewers. I gotta keep her happy. Katie Couric has a talk show with millions of viewers. I gotta keep her happy. <laughs> well played, Harrison. Well played. As it turns out, Couric's visit to the pawn shop was even featured on her own talk show, adding another layer of entertainment to the whole affair. It seems that even for someone as accomplished as Katie Couric, a trip to the pawn shop can lead to some unexpected and amusing moments. Dennis Quaid in a surprising turn of events, season 18 of a popular show featured a man with a movie poster that sparked quite the commotion. The poster in question was for a Ronald Reagan biopic set to hit the screens in 2022, and what made it particularly special was the absence of a rating, indicating its early production stage. But that's not all. The icing on the cake was the signature adorning the poster, none other than that of the star of the movie, Dennis Quaid. Now, the owner of this prized possession was quite confident about the authenticity of the signature. I got it from the producer. But when it comes to deals, trust is a rare commodity. So, in a bid to verify the signature, the one and only Rick decided to call in the man himself, Dennis Quaid, to inspect the poster. And let's just say, things took an unexpected turn. As Quaid strolled in, Known for his memorable roles in The Parent Trap and The Day After Tomorrow, he was taken aback by the sight of the poster. It turns out that he had originally signed and gifted it to producer Mark Joseph, who then passed it on to the current owner. I signed this for Mark Joseph, who is the producer, and he just turns around and sells it to you, I guess. With a twinkle in his eye and a hint of nostalgia, Quaid shared some intriguing insights about his connection with Reagan and the upcoming movie. And before you knew it, he swiftly verified his own signature, leaving no room for doubt. But that wasn't the end of the story. The man behind the poster had his own game plan, asking for $350 and eventually settling for a sweet deal at $200. It seemed like a win-win situation until you realize who the real winner was, None other than Rick himself. How, you ask? Well, he managed to charm Quaid into joining him for dinner later that day with an enticing offer to showcase some Reagan memorabilia. A lot of really cool Reagan memorabilia come in here. Yeah, I'm very interested. And so, over dinner, Rick laid out his cards, or rather, his treasures. From a worn flight cap to a handwritten note and even a medallion featuring the patron saint of actors, Quaid's interest was piqued. What followed was a negotiation battle of epic proportions, resulting in Quaid shelling out $2,150 for the medallion, along with the promise of a delightful dinner. In the end, Rick walked away with nearly $3,000 from just one customer, proving yet again why he's the reigning king of salesmanship. Who would have thought that a simple movie poster could lead to such an eventful evening? But hey, when Dennis Quaid and Rick come together, anything is possible. Bob Dylan Bob Dylan, the enigmatic music icon, made a rare and unexpected appearance on an episode of the History Channel's Pawn Stars back in 2010, much to the astonishment of fans and the show's cast alike. The details surrounding Dylan's impromptu cameo remain shrouded in mystery, adding to the intrigue of this already remarkable event. 
The official version of the story goes like this. A customer walks into the Vegas gold and silver pound shop, owned by the one and only Rick Harrison, with a vinyl copy of Dylan's 1970 album, Self Portrait. What follows is a classic haggling session, with the customer initially asking for $150. And what were you looking to get out of it? I was thinking maybe like $150 and Harrison eventually settling on a price of $50, which, let's be honest, is still a bit steep considering the album's lack of collector's value. Surprisingly, Harrison decides to showcase the album on his show and even offers to sell it for $75. But here's where it gets really interesting. After acquiring the album, Harrison realizes that Bob Dylan himself is in town for a show and, in a stroke of genius or madness, he sends Chum Lee, the lovable buffoon of the show, on a mission to track down the elusive musician and get him to sign the album. Bob Dylan's in town for a concert. I want you to bring this album to him and have him sign it. All right. And so, armed with determination and a cameraman in tow, Chum Lee sets out on the quest of a lifetime. Chum Lee's escapade through the bustling streets of Vegas is nothing short of comical, as he approaches random strangers with the burning question, Have you seen Bob Dylan? Excuse me, have you guys seen Bob Dylan? No, man. Do you know where he's at? After what must have felt like an eternity, he finally spots Dylan clad in a western shirt, casually strolling near the mirage. The encounter that follows is pure gold. With an air of nonchalance, Chumley requests a signature from Dylan who responds with a skeptical gaze and the peculiar move of putting on his sunglasses to inspect the album. This is your album, right? Chumley asks, to which Dylan offers a cryptic reply before attempting to evade the inevitable. I don't have a pen, claims Dylan, only to be thwarted by Chumley's preparedness. This is your album, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think I see that. Oh. I don't have a pen. After some playful banter, Dylan relents and signs the album, much to Chum Lee's delight. The exchange culminates in a fist bump and Dylan boarding his bus, leaving Chum Lee to revel in his triumph. In a post-episode interview with Rolling Stone's Andy Green, Chum Lee recounts his version of the escapade, emphasizing the spontaneity of the encounter. He describes how he stumbled upon the tour buses parked near the venue after hours of aimless wandering and then seized the opportunity to approach Dylan for the autograph. The sheer audacity of Chumley's pursuit and the incredulity of Dylan's reaction make for a tale that is as amusing as it is unbelievable. Johnny Fairplay in a surprising turn of events, a familiar face from CBS's Survivor made an appearance on an episode of Pawn Stars, and it wasn't just any ordinary visit. The guest brought along an item that could be considered a treasure in the world of music memorabilia, and it's connected to a group that's even more famous than the guest himself or the renowned Harrison family. For those who may not be familiar with the name Johnny Fairplay, let's paint a picture for you. Fairplay rose to fame on the classic CBS reality show, Survivor, where he made waves with an infamous lie about his grandmother's death, which ultimately gave him an unfair advantage in the game. This strategic move solidified his status as a memorable character in Survivor history. Fast forward to his appearance on season eight of Pawn Stars, and Fairplay was ready to engage in a different kind of game. No, he wasn't stepping into the wrestling ring or resorting to underhanded tactics. Instead, he came to the Pawn Stars shop with a mission, to sell a piece of music history. What was this coveted item, you ask? None other than a vinyl LP of the Red Hot Chili Peppers debut album, signed by the band members themselves. Now, that's what we call a rare find. It's no wonder that this gem instantly caught the attention of Rick Harrison and his team, as it promised to be one of the most unique and sought-after pieces in their collection. As the scene unfolded, Rick wasted no time in calling in a signature expert to verify the authenticity of the prized possession. To everyone's delight, including the brightly garbed Fair Play, the expert confirmed that both the record and its signatures were indeed the real deal. Rick's expert appraised the item at $2,000. 
I think is worth in a $2,000 range. It's that special. But as we all know, Rick doesn't play around when it comes to making deals. He dove headfirst into negotiations with Fair Play, showcasing his trademark tooth tactics. How much you want for it now? Um, 2000 It was a battle of wits and wills as they went back and forth, with Fair Play holding his ground and ultimately agreeing to a final price tag of $100. $1,100. $1,100. Okay. In the end, both parties walked away satisfied with the outcome. Fair Play had successfully offloaded a prized possession for a handsome sum, while Rick added another valuable piece to his ever-growing collection of unique items. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.